All right, so Melina texted me that she'd be out at Pescadero, so I threw my paints in the car, headed out there. We painted for about two hours. Uh, it was sort of windy and we were working quickly, so I didn't talk to the camera, but I did think that it could be valuable to share the process with you guys. Um, lately, what I've been doing is trying to be more fluid in my compositional approach. In other words, I'm uh, kind of erasing things or like wiping things down and moving things around and not and not moving on uh, from the sketch stage like in other words not moving on into the block in until I'm really happy with the arrangement of shapes and the composition uh, in the past I used to just go out with my viewfinder find a composition and do my best to duplicate it now my approach is is to use the visual landscape as raw materials to create a good painting so um, there's a lot of playing going on, just kind of experimenting and moving things. I find it's a much more enjoyable way to paint and I find that it's also, it results in better paintings.
Okay, so this is where I decided to stop. Um, let's first talk about the color mixtures. I know people have questions about that. Usually for water, I'll start with a mixture of ultramarine, a little bit of thalo, and then I'll use burnt sienna to kind of give it a greenish tint. Uh, and then I'll just make adjustments. Um, you know, like here I started seeing some purple, so I added some dioxazine purple into the water. Occasionally I'll also add uh, alizarin, uh, although I don't see any passages that have the alizarin in it. Uh, for my cliffs, I started with burnt sienna, and then I'll add a bit of blue to kind of dull it down a bit. 
and then even more blue where it gets darker uh, down below. If it starts getting too green, I'll add some alizarin uh, to dull down the green. Uh, the darks are typically a mixture of uh, ultramarine and alizarin crimson. And then for sand, I'll usually start with yellow ochre, white, and then I'll add a bit of blue, which that'll darken it a little bit, but it'll also uh, lean it towards green. So again, I will add uh, alizarin crimson to um, dull down the green and push it more towards a red. And then the greens, usually ultramarine or thalo mixed with cadmium yellow medium. And then oftentimes I'll mix in some burnt sienna to um, you know, warm up the greens. As far as the composition goes, there are some awkward things that I would change, like this bit of water here. But to be honest, I've lived with this painting for a couple days, and I don't mind it as much as I did when I finished it. The one thing I'll, I'll point out is there are quite a few areas of thick and thin. In other words, these areas are just all scrubbed in. There's a lot of transparency, and then there's opaque, uh, you know, areas of opaque paint over the transparent areas. Uh, you see that up along here as well. The sky is definitely a lot rougher than I usually leave my sky. I used to like take the sky and just kind of smooth it all out. Uh, but I kind of like, um, I like the irregularities in the sky. So I think I'll leave it. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, my videos are made possible by the support I get on Patreon. If you'd like to pitch in, there's a link down below. I have additional videos. Um, talking, sharing ideas about art and painting on my Patreon page. Like I said, link down below. Other than that, stay creative and I'll see you guys in the next video.